Hello and welcome to Field Notes, and today we are going to be continuing with our series on earthquakes. If you haven't watched the introduction to this, click here to go back and watch the first video. So now that we understand the basic mechanics of an earthquake, we can get more specific. We learned last time that earthquakes are caused by seismic waves. This time we'll be looking at the different types of those seismic waves, how each of them moves and contributes to the earthquake, and then which of them actually causes the destruction. These waves are broken up into two main categories, body waves, which include P waves and S waves, and surface waves, which are the more well-known Love and Rayleigh waves. So to start out, let's look at the body waves. Inside the category of body waves, we have have P waves or primary waves and S waves or secondary waves. Primary waves are called this because they are the fastest. They will be the first ones to reach a seismic station and indicate that an earthquake is occurring. These waves are a type of compressional wave because of the way they move. If you think of a slinky, slinkies are used a lot in describing wave motion. When you press it together and then pull it apart, that is the motion of this wave, a compress and stretch. The last important piece of information to know about P waves is that they will travel through both solids and liquids. This isn't the case with other waves, but P waves can travel through both mediums. Secondary waves are slower and typically arrive on the scene second. These waves have an up and down or side to side motion. So again, looking at our slinky, when you shake it back and forth or up and down, that's the motion of a secondary wave. Or here's a nice professional pretty labeled version. Unlike P waves, S waves will only travel through solids. So if this wave meets a body of water, say an ocean, it won't travel through it. So we've covered body waves and next we have surface waves. First and foremost, surface waves occur at a lower frequency than body waves. They are slower and arrive after both P waves and S waves. They are also responsible for the majority of the damage that is done during an earthquake. Because earthquakes can happen at very depths in the earth, the deeper the earthquake happens, the less destructive the surface waves will be. And that's because these waves only really happen on the surface of the earth. And if the earthquake occurs deeper in the earth, these waves have less energy by the time they get to the surface. Now breaking it down to the two types, we have love waves. Love waves are the fastest moving surface wave and they propagate horizontally on the surface. Sure. These aren't gonna make any sense until you see the little diagram, which is super helpful. And finally, we get to Rayleigh waves. And this wave's motion is more unique. It is a rolling motion. So when you're thinking of this motion, think of waves in an ocean, which also have a very distinct roll. Most of the shaking and destruction caused by an earthquake is actually caused by the Rayleigh waves. And that's because these waves can be a lot bigger than the other types. So that just about wraps up the four different types of waves and how they contribute to an earthquake. It is interesting to note that because of each wave's size and timing, you can actually pinpoint each different type of wave on a seismogram, which I will explain in greater detail in a coming video. Thank you for watching the second installment on our earthquake series. Remember to like if you like it, subscribe if you would like to see more, share to your social media sites, and I will see you next time. That was so loud.